Today we're going to be looking at the Apple Mac Mini. This is currently the latest version of the Mac Mini and is the cheapest Mac on the market. So if you're someone who needs Mac based software, like say Final Cut Pro, or if you just appreciate the stability and reliability of the Mac OS, this is currently the least expensive way to do it. There are currently three versions of the Mac Mini available. The base model with a Core i5 processor, a more powerful version with the Core i7 processor, and a server version. These, however, are not fitted with the latest Haswell generation processors. All versions come with 4GB of RAM standard, but you can add up to 16GB of RAM. RAM can be added at the time of purchase or later if you need it. In terms of storage, there are three major options. The standard mechanical hard drive, what Apple calls fusion drive, and the fastest option, solid state memory. Now all these can either be selected at the time of purchase or can be added later. And there are lots of videos on YouTube that cover these modifications. Now there is no dedicated graphic graphics card or even an option to add one later. However, the built-in Intel HD Graphics 4000 is significantly better than any built-in graphics card from the past. The version we'll be looking at today is the Core i7 version of the Mac Mini. The first thing to really understand about the Mac Mini is that it isn't exactly a complete computer package. All Apple sells you is the desktop itself. The display, keyboard and mouse are not included. In fact, Apple promotes this flexibility that allows you to use pretty much any display, keyboard and mouse combination you like. In terms of display options, you can use displays with either HDMI or Thunderbolt inputs. There's an output port for each of those on the back of the Mac Mini. In terms of a keyboard and mouse, you can pretty much use any wired or wireless mouse and keyboard. So let's first take a look around the Mac Mini. The body of the Mac is constructed from a single piece of machined aluminum with a black Apple logo embedded on top. The front of the device is very minimalistic in typical Apple fashion. All you'll see are an infrared receiver and the power indicator light which burns white when the Mac is on. The sides are machined aluminum and there's nothing on either side. The back is where everything happens. There's a rather inconveniently placed power button, a port for the power cord, an ethernet port, a firewire port, and HDMI and Thunderbolt ports for the display. Apple incidentally includes a Thunderbolt to DVI adapter in case your monitor only has a DVI input. You can also buy a Thunderbolt to VGA adapter for VGA monitors. You also have four USB 3.0 ports, an SD card slot, and mic and headphone inputs. There's also a slim port for ventilation. One of the cool things about the Mac Mini is that there is no power brick. The power supply is built into the device and this is a rather impressive feat of engineering. So there's no bulky power brick hanging from your desktop. The bottom of the Mac Mini is also very unique. There's this removable cover that you can turn to remove and this gives you easy access to the RAM, storage and other components. For example, we were able to upgrade the RAM on this unit to 16 gigabytes in less than 10 minutes. In our setup here, we've used a Samsung TV Plus monitor combo as our display, a wireless Logitech K750 keyboard, and a wireless Logitech mouse. Now you can use any combination of peripherals that you prefer, but we do recommend using a monitor as a display and not an HDTV. Text is much sharper on a monitor and it just makes web browsing and other tasks much easier on the eyes. The links to the devices we used in this setup are also below. The computer boots up extremely fast and reveals Mac OS X's standard desktop and dock. If you're using an HD display, we recommend using the 720p setting when configuring it. It offers a nice balance between usability and clarity. And the reason for this is a rather annoying quirk in Mac OS. If your display is a 1080p display and you do set the preferred resolution to 1080p, instantly all the menu's text becomes tiny and the menu itself becomes rather narrow and this makes the Mac almost unusable. It's really harsh on the eyes and there's no way to change the menu text size, something that Apple will hopefully fix at some point. The Core i7 version of the Mini flies through day-to-day -day tasks such as web browsing and HD video playback. When it comes to more intensive programs like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, the results are a mixed bag. For example, editing videos on Final Cut Pro works very smoothly. However, transcoding and rendering videos takes a whole lot longer than on other Mac desktops. So if rendering and transcoding times are a concern, you might want to look into a Mac with a dedicated graphics card. Graphics intensive 
immersive games might also encounter some lag or choppiness. However, photo editing programs like Photoshop or Lightroom will run very smoothly. The Mac Mini is also the quietest desktop we've ever tested. You'll rarely hear the cooling fan turn on, and that's mostly when it's doing some heavy lifting, like say, transcoding videos. Otherwise, you'll barely notice the device is on. So should you buy the Mac Mini? Well, that all comes down to what you plan to use it for. If you're looking for the stability of Mac OS and plan to use it for web browsing, light video editing, or photo editing, the Mini is a great value. However, if you plan to use your desktop for more regular and intensive video editing or graphics intensive gaming, you might want to look at the iMac lineup instead. If you own a Mac Mini, do share your experience in the comment section below. Hope this review has been useful. If it has, please like this video and hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more reviews. Thanks for watching.